Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Thank you for joining us, friend. My Bible right now sits open to the Gospel of Mark in chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, if at all possible, get your Bible and join me there right now. Not long ago, a young believer asked me this question. They asked, Pastor Mark, which part of the Bible or which parts of the Bible are the most important? (laughs) Wow, that's quite a question. Well, the problem is that the answer really depends on the person to whom you're talking. First of all, we need to say that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's all profitable, 1 Timothy 3 says. None of the Scripture is more inspired than any other part. The second thing we need to say is that for a lost person, obviously the gospel is the most important part. I could take you to Matthew 16, 26, around in there where it says, what will it profit a man if he gain the whole world? Or if I could paraphrase the scripture, gain all Bible knowledge, but lose his own soul. But thirdly, for a believer, the most important part of the Bible is that part which speaks most pointedly to their present need to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8, verse 29, it is God's goal for us to become like Christ. Now, today in our passage, Jesus was asked a similar question. Join me here and let's see how Christ answers the question that's posed to him. The Gospel of Mark and chapter 12. Along the way, as we have been doing in recent days, I'll be giving to you a text messaging number. I'd like this to become a two-way communication between us. Well, Bible Tract Echoes is the radio arm of Bible Tracts Incorporated. In my hand is one of the gospel tracts that we publish here. It's entitled, The Tragedy of a Wasted Life. The Tragedy of a Wasted Life. It begins with Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brother, and you probably know the verse. But then it goes on to say, a sad old man dying of cancer told a pastor friend his tragic story. Here's what he said. Years ago in Sweden, God called me to preach. To this I agreed if he would enable me to sell my farm. Well, the very next day a man made me an offer, but I hesitated telling him to return on the morrow. After prayer, I promised God that I would preach if the buyer would agree to take my job at Sunday school as Sunday school superintendent. The man said, this is the very chance I've wanted. All along the way, this man kept putting obstacles in the way, and he ends his life unfulfilling the call of God, the plan of God in his life. Oh, friend, God has a purpose for you. He saved us for a purpose. He wants to use us. And dear friend, Christ died on the cross for a purpose, that he might save us from our sin. This is a great gospel tract, The Tragedy of a Wasted Life. It speaks about living a surrendered, consecrated life, and it also speaks about knowing Christ as Savior. I want you to have this track. I think you know people who could be encouraged, believers as well as lost people, by this gospel track. Would you let me send you this track, The Tragedy of a Wasted Life, At the end of my broadcast, my announcer is going to make known to you our telephone number. It's going to make known our web address, our email address, our actual mailing address, all that kind of information. If you will communicate with us, give us your name, give us your address. We will send you absolutely free of charge a sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. This one will be in it right now. And by the way, we are right now in the process of printing about, oh, a half a million tracks inside the country of Pakistan. They are about ready to have a big evangelistic push during the month of March. I'm excited to be a part of that. Please pray with the believers in Pakistan and the the furtherance of the gospel there. 
Right now, the Gospel of Mark in chapter 12, I begin reading at verse 28. Here's what it says. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he, that is Jesus, had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he, and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. I'm going to stop reading right there. We began looking at these this section here on Monday's broadcast, and our point on Monday was the fact that we came to deal with the truth that the questioner had a heart motive behind asking Jesus the question. And we focus on the truth that our thoughts and the intents of our hearts not only are important to God, but they are judged by God. Well, let me give you my outline for these verses, verses 28 through 34. In verse 28, we find the perception, the perception of the questioner. In verses 29 to 31, we find the precepts, the precepts communicated by Jesus. Then, verses 32 and 33, we find the point, the point that is grasped by the one asking the question. And lastly, verse 34, the position of the one asking the question, the position in relationship to the kingdom. Verse 34, I didn't read it before, says this, And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. That is a great, great statement to be made about somebody. Well, come back to verse 28, the perception. The perception of the Pharisee. Now, while the Gospel of Mark here identifies the man as a scribe, Matthew 22 calls him a Pharisee. The Pharisees and the Sadducees had a relationship, but the Pharisees prided themselves on knowing the Bible. They debated among each other about some of the most idiotic, minute issues. All of this was done uh, primarily to show one another how well each of them knew the Bible. Uh, uh, One debate among the Pharisees, historians tell us, dealt with uh, this very question posed of Jesus here in verse 28. This perceptive Pharisee had heard the wisdom of Jesus as he answered the question about the resurrection, so now he asked Jesus to weigh in on the ongoing debate over the weightiest commandment of all. There was no hesitation in Jesus' answer. Remember, friend, Jesus is the author of Scripture. Our Bible is the written Word of God. Jesus is the living Word of God. He's called the Word, and he's called God there in John 1. 1. So Jesus, the author of the Bible, did not need to hesitate in replying to the question. That leads to the precepts here in verses 29 through 31. Jesus here quotes from Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 and 5. Now, this, he quotes this to the Pharisee. And Hebrew scholars tell me that the way these two verses out of Deuteronomy were written, they're bracketed with capital or large letters, and that when done so, this openly identifies the statements between these capital letters or large letters as being a very of, of, of utmost importance. Loving God with your entire being is not simply a New Testament idea. It is a, it is the cornerstone of truth through all of the Word of God. Well, that was the precept Jesus taught. The point being gotten, uh, bad English there, but the point gathered by the one, the Pharisee asking the question in verses 32 and 33 is clear. He asks the question about the greatest commandment. Jesus answers him, and he gets it. The Pharisee gets it. You see, it's not the religious acts or the ceremonial services that uh, display our 
our heart love for God. Oh, be sure, friend, God has set up, God did set up the religious worship practices and the sacrificial system that the Jewish people practice. But this Pharisee got the point that loving God from the very depth of your being would, uh, would well, it was more to a person about what showing their love for God than any worship could do. If a person loved God, he would worship God honestly and humbly. Jesus said in, in John chapter 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. 1 John 5, 3, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. A heart that loves God will do what he asks out of love. The Pharisee did, that, did their actions out of duty and out of showing off. Their worship was, well, their worship was in God's nostrils nothing more than the stench of a garbage dump. And friend, you may be religious, but you may not be right with God in your heart. You may not love God in your heart. Well, let me just stop here. And I said about this text messaging uh, idea we've got going on here. I'm interested in your feedback. I'm interested in your thoughts on this particular broadcast. Would you text me the word gospel, G-O-S-P-E-L, to this number? Now, this is a different number than my announcer is going to give. To text me, you need to go to this number, area code 708 515 40 86. Here it is again, 708-515-4086. I will in about a minute give that number again for those that may be driving or unable to find something to write down of this number on. But you be prepared. I'll give it again here in a moment. Well, let me ask you, listener, are you a religious person? Do you practice, do you participate in all the ceremonies at your church? Well, okay, but now let me ask you if you are having an honest love relationship with Jesus Christ from your heart. Have you experienced the love of God by receiving Christ Jesus as your Savior? I'm not asking now about your religiosity. I'm not asking you about uh, how much, how often you go and what your role is at church. One of, uh, one of the gospel tracts we publish here is entitled Riding the Religious Merry-Go-Round. Friend, if you're riding a religious merry-go-round and do not understand the love of God, his love for you in your heart, then friend, you can be religious from now until the cows come home, but you haven't got everlasting life. Do you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, or do you have a religious re religiosity through ritual practices? Well, I said I was going to give that, that text messaging number again. Let me do it right now. Text me the word gospel to this number, area code 708-515-4086. One more time, 708-515-4086. Dear believer friend, dear soul winner friend, why do you serve God? Is it because you love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? Or has our love uh, begun to grow cold? If so, let's get back on our knees, back with the word of God, before God's throne, and say, Father, restore the embers of my love relationship with you. Clear out anything in the way of me putting Christ first and loving him most in my heart, soul, and life. You stay tuned. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracts, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.